Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com free site, DwyerVIP.com free site. Today is May the 4th, 2018. Let's talk boxing, but first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, before I jump into Golovkin against Mortarosian, Let's just briefly talk about Golovkin's recent comments that there's only about a 10% chance of him fighting Canelo. Let me just say I'm surprised it's that high. Understand, despite all the public statements, right, we'll get drug tested every day. Isn't that what Oscar De La Hoya said, right? Despite all of the drug testing statements, Canelo, a world-class fighter, right, a champion in multiple divisions, is still not enrolled in VADA. He's not taking VADA tests as we speak, despite recently failing two drug tests. Now, juicers will tell you that the time to juice is before the event. It's in the off-season not during the season when you're getting tested. Now, you know they have an off-season in boxing because here you have a world-class fighter in Saul Alvarez and somehow he's not getting tested every day. Folks, how's there even a drug testing protocol if this could happen? Right, if, if you aren't tested on a regular basis, if you're not subject to random drug tests during times of the year, then there's no drug testing protocol. Then what you have is a situation where a fighter can juice, then in the 12 weeks before the fight decide, hey, you know, it's about time that I clean up my act, use water-based steroids, make sure that there's nothing in his urine. So when he goes through the late testing protocol, right, the regimen that's really more of a publicity stunt than a medical event, right, he tests clean. If the fighter's a cynic, he could even come out and talk about the evils of drug use. Well, let me just say, the fact that Canelo isn't subject to VADA testing right now should disqualify him as an opponent for the fall, shouldn't it? You already have probable cause to suspect that something bad's going on, given that Canelo has already failed a couple of drug tests, given that Canelo is now post-suspension, right? Folks, he's suspended right now. Think about it. And even with the punishment, the guy is still not subjecting himself to random drug tests. Right? That 10% should really be 1%, shouldn't it? Let's talk about the Marta Rosie and Golovkin fight. Now, first, let me say this. Golovkin needs to be careful here. He's going to be fighting in Venice Marta Rosian's part of the country, Southern California. Right? Now, Will Chamberlain put it best. No one roots for Goliath. You have a local fighter fighting against the big bad wolf, right? Sooner or later, people are going to start rooting for the local fighter if the fight's close and the local fighter doesn't hit the canvas like Danny Jacobs did early in his fight against Golovkin. So Golovkin really can't leave any doubt. Not only that, his brand has taken a little bit of a hit, hasn't it? Right, Danny Jacobs gets up off the canvas, but then switches to Southpaw, wins, wins rounds, tightens that fight up, makes it closer than pundits thought it would be. Goes the distance with Golovkin, the first man to do that in several fights, snaps Golovkin's KO streak. So then after that, we have Canelo. Right, Canelo's on his back foot. Lord, he is moving. I'm surprised Adidas or Nike didn't give him a sneaker deal after that fight, the way he moved. 
right? Fred Astaire had nothing on Canelo that night. Canelo, on his back foot, goes the distance with Golovkin, and then it was Christmas time, wasn't it? The judges call that fight a draw. So if you're Golovkin, you're thinking to yourself, man, I need to get back in the saddle. I need a stoppage, especially against a guy like Vanis Martirosian, who isn't even a regular occupant of your weight class. Right? Vanis is coming up in weight. Now, I know people behind the scenes know Vanis might actually be the bigger man in real life. Right? I believe Vanis weighed more than Golovkin at the 30-day weigh-in and at the 7-day weigh-in. But let's face it, that's not what Vanis's boxing resume says. His boxing resume has him as a super welter, not as a middleweight. And Golovkin knows who he is. He's one of the best middleweights in history. Right? Think Stanley Ketchel. Think Carlos Monzon. Think Marvin Hagler. Think Bernard Hopkins. Folks, they're not that many. Superstar Mount Rushmore level middleweights. Golovkin is on the mountain. Right, so you can imagine how it would be a little embarrassing if some welterweight or super welterweight somehow was able to hop in the ring with Stanley Ketchel and hang with him. Right, was able to, you know, hop in the ring with Carlos Monzon and actually hold his own. In my opinion, Golovkin can't afford that, especially not in Southern California, where if Vanis Martirosian is competitive in the eighth round, the crowd's going to start saying, Vanis, Vanis. The bet I'm recommending here, and the odds are terrible. I'm not here to say the odds are justified. They're greater than a minus 400. But the bet I'm recommending here is Golovkin by KO. Hedged with Martirosian simply to win. You're getting huge odds on the Martirosian side of the play. In my opinion, Golovkin fighting a hometown fighter, right, at a time where he needs to rejuvenate his brand. I believe Golovkin goes for it. Comes in, is throwing bombs. Right? Now we know. Martirosian has passed every drug test, right? So I'm just not sure if Martirosian is going to be able to withstand the beating. But let me say this, right? Martirosian is talking smack, and it's the right kind of smack. I believe there are two ways to rough up Golovkin. One we just saw. Danny Jacobs using length on his back foot from a southpaw stance. Right? Confusing Golovkin. Martirosian can't do that. Martirosian's right-handed. So the other way is we'll call it the Kasim Uma way. By the way, for those who want to see that fight, I have links in my favorites folder to both the whole fight and the highlights. Right? Kasim Uma gets low, brings the fight to Golovkin, has moments, right? Looks great, quite frankly, in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth rounds. By the way, yes, the fight goes rounds before ultimately wilting. Now, people need to understand that Uma, who's still fighting, by the way, right? I know some of you are saying, didn't Golovkin stop his career? No, he didn't. Right, But Uma, the bloom was off the rose by the time he fights Golovkin. Uma had losses on his record. Was no longer the elite fighter that he used to be. He was in the twilight of his career when he fought Golovkin. But what you'll notice is he gets so close to Golovkin that Golovkin couldn't extend his arms. You'll also notice, too, that Golovkin, who is at his best when his opponent is upright, and Golovkin is throwing bombs from distance, right? Golovkin had a hard time generating power against an opponent who was bent over. 
right, who's throwing uppercuts. Angles are everything in boxing. So, Uma looks good against Golovkin. To me, that opens the door to the argument, and it's one I believe in, that the way to beat Golovkin isn't from the outside in, unless you're a southpaw working behind a jab like Jacobs. But the way to beat Golovkin is from the inside out. Right? Golovkin hits hard, but he likes to extend his arms. If you can get inside, and if you can, and this is important, David Lemieux didn't figure out this part of the equation. If you can either smother Golovkin's jab, right, come in, know the angle he's going to throw the jab at, have a hand up to just smother it. Or if you could avoid the jab, right, do a Joe Fraser, come in, you want to be on your front foot, but come in at angles, right? Bob and weave. Have Golovkin have to think about where he's going to throw the jab. Be ready to launch left hook. So as Golovkin's throwing a jab, he's at risk of getting hit with something. Now, Vanis is saying that that's what he's going to do. He's saying, look, I'm going to bring the fight to Golovkin. Right? Let me just say that Vanis, for all the smack, and nine times out of ten, I hear a fighter talking smack before a fight, and I, I just look the other way. <coughs> Everyone's brave until they enter the ring. But this is that unique case where the fighter's talking smack, and you're thinking to yourself, you know what? This guy clearly has looked at film, he's figured things out. Right? You don't beat Golovkin on your back foot. You beat him on your front foot. You have to get up on his chest. You have to prevent him from getting leverage on his shots. Force him to open up because Golovkin, quite frankly, is not defensively blessed. Right? So, I'm expecting a shootout. I'm expecting an early stoppage, right? I believe Martirosian understands that this is the chance of a lifetime. And I believe Martirosian has made a bargain with himself, right? Knock out or get knocked out. If he's going to fight the big bad wolf, he's going to try to hit the big bad wolf in the mouth. He's going to try to get Golovkin on his back foot. Do you remember the last fight you saw where Golovkin was on his back foot for a prolonged period of time? Other than the Kasim Uma fight, I can't think of the fight. Right? Martirosian isn't here for moral victories. He doesn't want to go the distance and say, hey, I'm one of the guys who went the distance with Golovkin. No, he wants to win. He sees holes in Golovkin's game he wants to exploit. Now the problem, and it is a problem, is his lack of experience in middleweight. Look, you could show up bigger than you normally do for a middleweight fight. Are you ready to deal with middleweight punches? In a real fight, not sparring. Right? From a heavy-handed middleweight. I'm not sure if Martirosian is. So I'm expecting this fight to end early. The bet I like is Golovkin by stoppage. Hedged with Martirosian simply to win. Let me point out too, there's a challenge to Golovkin in this fight. Martirosian has never been stopped. He's been beaten He's never been stopped. Right? I believe Golovkin gets back to being Golovkin. I'm expecting Martirosian to have his moments. I am expecting Martirosian, who knows how to fight inside, to get inside and to try to deal with Golovkin. But I am expecting Golovkin's power to rule the day. I'm expecting Golovkin to figure things out, which he eventually does.
and even the Kasim Uma fight. I'm expecting Golovkin to land some hellacious body shots. I'm expecting Vanis Martirosian to understand that the guys at middleweight weigh a little bit more than the guys at super welter and hit a little bit harder too. Right? I like Golovkin by KO hedged with Marta Rosie and simply to win, but understand the risk involved. If this fight goes like Golovkin's last two fights, right, the Jacobs fight and the Canelo fight, <clears throat> you lose it all. In other words, if Vanis Marta Rosie is still standing at the end of the fight, and this is a guy who's never not been standing at the end of a fight that he's lost, you lose it all. Right? That's the risk I'm willing to take. Let me hear from you. I like Golovkin by stoppage. Hedged with the opponent simply to win. That's how I see the fight. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.